the last time you updated your resume? I know a lot of people who recently became unemployed after years at the same job. Since they were with one company for so long, they don't have an updated resume. They just didn't need one. In fact, some clients have sent me resumes that are over 10 years old. Things have changed a lot in the past decade. If you were still renting movies from an actual store and taking selfies using digital cameras, the last time you updated your resume, it probably needs a significant overhaul. Stay tuned and by the end of this video, you'll have four tips to get your resume up to 2020 standards. For the best job search and career advice, please hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Kelly, a career coach and professional development specialist. I've mentored thousands of job seekers through the application process. The four tips I'm going to share with you today have helped many of my clients update their old and tired resumes after years of neglect. If you follow these steps, you will be able to whip your resume into shape in no time. Let's get started. First and foremost, follow the proper format. I see lots of resumes that use the same format you were taught back in college. University students are told to put their educational details at the top of the page. That's because they don't have a lot of experience to talk about. But once you get that first job, employers just don't care about your education. They care about your experience. The current unexpected format for anyone who is in the workforce is name and contact details at the top in the center. Your contact details should include your phone number, email address, and ideally your LinkedIn URL. As a side note, employers also appreciate when you include the hyperlink to the email address in LinkedIn. Next comes your career summary, not an objective. If you haven't written a career summary, check out my video on how to write one. Then comes your experience, followed by education and additional training, and finally, relevant skills. Eliminate unnecessary details. Speaking of training and relevant skills, eliminate unnecessary details. Remember how I mentioned education goes after experience because employers don't really care about education once you're working full time? Same thing goes for your GPA, just get rid of it. Also, don't bother mentioning your general skills that pretty much everyone has. Saying you are proficient in Microsoft Word is pretty useless because it's expected. However, if you've done some extra certifications or trainings, such as Six Sigma, or let's say an A plus IT certification, that's great to include. I realize some of this advice, such as including a career summary instead of an objective or not including certain details, such as proficiency in Microsoft Office might come as a surprise. I'm curious to know, is this news to you? Comment below and tell me something you've learned from this video that is new information. Focus on achievements, not experience. Next, be sure to focus on your achievements, not your day-to-day -day duties. Let's say you used to work in a call center. It goes without saying that you answered phones and provided excellent customer service. Rather than detailing what you did, explain what you accomplished. If you're struggling to articulate how you went above and beyond these daily duties, answer these questions. Have you ever supervised subordinates? or maybe you've trained new colleagues. Have you ever led a project? Did you do something to improve your company's performance, earn the company more money, increase customer satisfaction? These are the types of things employers are itching to see on resumes that make candidates stand out from the crowd. Two page limit. Finally, the two page limit still stands with very few exceptions. If you're wondering whether you are an exception to this rule, feel free to leave me a comment below explaining your situation and I will gladly give you some feedback letting you know what I think. Given the two page limit, you want to focus on positions you've held within the last 10 years. Now, if you had a really impactful and relevant position 15 years ago, feel free to keep it, but you may want to streamline the description a bit. On the other hand, if you had a position which doesn't add any value, even if it was within the last 10 years, you can always delete it, particularly if it makes more sense to dedicate that space to describing a more impressive position. 
There you have it. I hope these tips help you as you move forward with revising your old resume and throughout your job search. If you're interested in more tips and tricks for writing winning resumes, you can download a guide I've written in the description box below. Also, if you're interested in joining a community of job seekers like yourself, I have a Facebook group where I share advice related to all aspects of the job search process and career development. Join the Facebook group using the link below. If you liked this video, please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.